Jai Hind and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achins. As you all can see, I have with me Lieutenant General Ravi Shankar, who's going to take us through some lessons that India can learn out of this conflict happening between Russia and Ukraine. Although a whole lot of information is flying around, I am not here to discuss matters on the ground, which battle is taking place, where, and this and that is kind of insignificant at this moment because a lot of it is shrouded with a lot of misinformation. What we are here to is to understand the circumstances and the lessons that India can actually imbibe for its own security situation that it faces today. Thank you, sir, for joining me for this, I think, very interesting conversation that is not being talked about. Yeah, we're looking forward to it. Sir, the first question, although it's going to be a little military sort of a based, uh, but this this particular thing, we will kind of focus on two non-military lessons as we had discussed before. But the first question I'm going to, since it's a military conflict, I just want to open out this discussion by asking you, you know, with the might of the Russian army, uh, it's not like the Americans that have a history of war losses. It has, you know, achieved all its goals earlier. A lot of speculation was that the Russians would drive straight through Ukraine and this thing will be over in a jiffy. It didn't happen. What does that tell us, sir? Uh, well, uh, let me, let's put it this way. Uh, before we get to that question, I'll give a quick recap as what is the current status. Okay. Uh, if you look at the map, and this map is published by the New York Times, uh, you see that there's a distinct uh, effort by the Russians to reach Kiev at the earliest and get hold of its, the capital. It has also made a thrust towards Kharkov and then the traditional Donbass region and through the uh, which it wants to liberate and there's a thrust from, southwards from Crimea, right? Uh, so this is the main thrust. It's not as if the entire uh, Ukrainian army has been run over. For the first 24 hours or to 48 hours, everyone thought it was, uh, you know, game up for uh, Ukraine, and uh, you know the Russian might will just roll them over. But that has not happened. Uh, in the in the period of 22, 24 to 72 hours, you saw Ukrainians resisting, resistance coming up. Their so their side of the story also coming up. Right, the first cycle of this battle is over, where the Russians have got a foothold on. Uh, into Ukraine, and there's a very clear attempt to reach Kyiv, topple the government, and install a new government. At least that's what it is. Let's see. But within this, I think, like you said, there are tremendous lessons which we can draw, right? And uh, we'll go one by one. So let's have the question again. Sure, sir. So you know, economy. A lot of people base a war fighting capability of a country on its economic might. To a large extent, yes. But is it? The entire story that a strong economy will be able to fight a war better. No, well, I know, one has to understand. This is something which I read day before yesterday. Economies don't fight war; militaries do. So you could have a great economy, you could have the biggest economy, you could have the biggest comprehensive national park. But is your army strong enough at that point of time on ground? That's the fundamental thing. Unless your army is strong enough at that point of time to overcome the opponent, you will not win. It doesn't matter how strong an economy you have. So that means you need to have an army which is motivated, strong, well equipped. And then the numbers in the army don't count. The quantity doesn't count. In any given situation, it's a number of people at that point of time you can put on ground. And every ground, wherever it is, whether it's a Himalayan terrain, or our terrain, has a huge limitations of what it can take. It's something like a room. In a room, there can be 5 people existing, 10 people existing, 20 people existing. But the quality of existence of 5, 10, and 20 in that room is different. Maybe beyond 20, no one can fit into the room also. And it becomes counterproductive. People will kill each other for, and fight for space. So, every piece of ground has an optimum limit of the number of troops and the F equipment which it can take. It's called deployability in military parlance. So if you breach the deployability, there's no use. You can put any amount, it's a, you reach the a law of diminishing returns. 
So ultimately, you might have a great economy, you might have a great army. Can you deploy it on ground? Can you overcome the op- opponent at that point of time? Is that strength which you put on ground enough to overcome the opponent? That is the thing. And the biggest lesson for us, for us is in the Himalayas, it doesn't matter how big the comprehensive national power of China is. It doesn't matter how great an army it is and how well equipped is it. Can it fight in the Himalayan terrain under the conditions? And that is what the Ukrainians are proving to the Russians. The Russians have a great army, much bigger in size, economy greater, but they're still getting a fight. They might still win the Russians. That's a day, later day story. And of course, I'd like to remind people, politics or other war is a, pol- a continuation of politics by other means. And the flip of it. So whatever happens now, the finishing point will be in the politics and on a bargaining table. So one has to keep that in mind. Yeah. Absolutely. The table talks are already started. The Russian delegation yeah. is sitting in Belarus already trying to figure out how to meet up with the Ukrainians. So that's interesting. But sir, one thing that we see is the dedication of the Ukrainian people to fight for their own land, their, 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 their mother earth as they call it. Um, although, you know, there are very strong connections in terms of uh, the language, the history between Ukraine and Russia. But you see that 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 motivation amongst the people. Um, what does that tell us about the Indian security situation, sir? See, let's be very clear. A man, when his homeland is threatened, will fight. We'll, let's look at Afghanistan. In Afghanistan... Mm. It was the Taliban who had the people with them. And they could throw out the Americans. Okay, Whether you liked it or not, whether Pakistan played a great game or not, and all that is a later day story. The fact is that uh, the Taliban had the people with them. And they were the people who were fighting, and they won. Similarly, here the Ukrainians are fighting for their land, their motherland. And they'll fight. And the way the people are coming out with, you know, Women MPs with AK-47s and all that, they'll fight. And, you know, women collective groups making Molotov cocktails. I saw that in a TV yesterday, in BBC. So there is a latent sentiment to resist uh, Russia. So they fight. That's, uh, that's, how does it... Yeah, tell me. That's deep, sir. Actually, it's a, it's a, it's a rooted uh, kind of a quality. Yeah. Now, the flip side of the story, let's transpose it to our side. When you look at the LAC, China is fighting in Tibet and Tibetans are still not part of the mainstream of China. They are still treated as second-rate citizens. There is alienation. It might not be overt, but it, latent alienation is there. This is something we have to utilize. We must make PLA fight the next war in an alien land without any local resources. Right? So it has to be that the Tibetans might not fight. Today, Tibetans are, you know, calm and quiet about it. And they're, but they're ambiguous. They're, it's ambiguous peace. Can you convert this ambiguous peace into latent hostility during war? So that the PLA fights Indian Army and the Tibetans. One. Second, in case PLA makes some gains and there's a reverse and they have to, the fighting is on our side. Can we convert it into a hybrid system like what is there in Ukraine? Mm. That people fight asymmetrically thereafter with the PLA. The third part of the story. In case we have to do a uh, procret co and go across as a, or as a repost to Chinese trust, will the uh, local side us? Can we get the uh, Tibetans on our side fighting for us or assisting us. 
these are questions which i have, have come up these are the lessons we have to learn so what do we have to do to ensure this climate of positivity amongst the people of the land with us it's already there it's not as if it's not there mm-hmm. but how do we maximize it maximize it yes. to our benefit and to the detriment of pla and let pla know this is what will happen to you if you try phir aa jao and this it's not that this is a brand new idea sir there is historical precedent so there is a old, very old idea i have written articles yeah. about it how to use tibet and all that but we have to in the light of the ukrainian thing we have to change our absolutely thing. yes we don't need a daily appraising in tibet as far as tibet remains peaceful we are also happy people can live a good life and use chinese money to live well but when the time comes you they should, should be able it. to give up chinese absolutely absolutely that latent little fire needs to be kept alive yes kept alive absolutely china should be made to look over its shoulder constantly i mean the same thing was done by the allies in france yes um, the resistance movement yes and the french resistance were very strong i mean to a point that the, the nazis used to look behind their back uh so the value of good leadership i mean this is something which is uh, you know very interesting to see especially in the india china con- uh, context if you look at it in the russia ukraine context leadership is one thing which is coming out to be as the bright shining star uh, how would you kind of explain it sir see leadership always mattered there no doubt about it a good leader always led people to victory mm. let's analyze the leadership on both sides look at putin let's not underestimate his leadership yeah. it's been cold calculative planned measured he has this uh, i was speaking to one of my seniors the other day he says look he's had all his plans in place he probably had has a beautiful exit strategy also but that is to me a little shaky at this point of time and he's you know prepared the whole story well whether it is has gone to uh, china and sorted out fences with them made the solidarity pact came to india and got his uh, thing here he probably didn't tell everyone that what he is doing but he got his uh, people on his side and then he's executed this plan almost to perfection look at the flip but he's stayed aloof unapproachable people have uh, he has not been very communicative he really not a the people's choice of mm. you know is a autocratic almost a dictatorship look at president zelensky initially he appeared unsure stuttering as was a right off okay i mean the worst thing was that americans you know, the americans always make the wrong thing they took gunny out of the equation gunny ran and they, they here also they gave him a gunny like exit and he said sorry i don't want to go i give me ammunition i don't want to ride and i'll stay here and fight and he's made people rally around him now ukrainians are fighting so the moment the ukrainians are fighting and this guy is there whatever the russians do he'll become a martyr if they kill him he'll be a martyr he'll be streets he named after him saying, yeah and if you know the di- demography of ukraine he's got all ukrainians on his side so what's more certain russians are also swinging to this side so he has changed the story completely where this will look that doesn't mean that ukrainians have won uh, russia has lost it's ongoing let us see how it goes but the fact is that this here is a leader who appeared to have nothing but he's turned things around during war he's communicated better yeah he's spoken to his people now uh, let me give a flip to in our own uh, thing go back to eastern ladakh you found xi jinping behaving like putin he came here we sat on a jula he came to mahabalipuram at dosa sort here and went back and you know did doklam and all those nonsense and then of course eastern ladakh very calculated cold mm. cold and calculated okay so at that point of time if you remember a prime minister went to lay and spoke what he had to speak and it energized people there 
you know a lot of people will talk a lot of things about our prime minister i am uh, that's a different story uh, the politics part i'm not bothered but let's look at the leadership on that day he proved leadership by going there true it was followed up by our raksha mantri who went to lukung and spoke to people lukung is how much was uh, is about 15 kilometers away from uh, tinga fo on the same ridge line if, if, for people who don't know lukung is actually the base for uh, uh that dancing takappa post yes he went there when leaders go there and say look we are with you the troops feel the you know totally uh, it's a different sort of a feeling with the men then they'll fight for anything then you saw suresh uh, santosh babu what he did he stood and fought he died that doesn't matter but he made others fight for the nation hmm. outnumbered whatever you call it so leaders change and the leader who is the leader at that point of time it could be a small sipahi who becomes a leader at in an instant or the a nationalist who rejuvenates nations look we are lucky in india we are very lucky that we had ter- tremendous leaders who rallied people whether it is indira gandhi or mr vajpayee or it was mr manmohan singh or it is now uh, mr modi i mean my hats off to them that they have stood and we are lucky to have such good leaders it doesn't matter which uh, party they are from they have held us together and this is something which china has to worry i am very clear about it he's fighting for his own seat sir <laughs> well <laughs> let him go <laughs> well, what what you say is correct uh, if you look at zelensky's uh, you know outreach towards his people in spite of the fact that they they've been cyber attacks and this attacks and that attacks there are videos coming out every day there are photographs coming out every day his statements are out he spoke to he put out a tweet to elon musk to start stalling services and that has been done so communication wise the guy is actually communication wise he has been able to communicate with his people not just his people people in russia as well uh, russia also and people outside also now the world is rooting for him like an underdog yeah mm. <clears throat> people said oh next 24 hours russia will throw this fellow out and no you know uh, yeah, mm, new government will be in and nothing so far everything is stand still it is just the small enclaves as you see in the map with russia has got all of i mean it is so called more no 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 what's more he is this entire story has generated probably a lot of uh, feeling in ukraine even if russia takes over ukraine tomorrow they going to face hybrid situation yeah heavy insurgency heavy and they plan for it they've got these weapons stashed away all over the place and and it is probably part of uh, ukraine's uh plan concept mm. to fight hybrid we must read it we expected everything to go hunky dory military and th- there were enough indications which were coming that ukrainians will not ukrainians will not do the conventional in fact one of the lessons which we need to discuss in uh, the military component of this talk is the fight between the hybrid war and the conventional war conventional war with force multipliers on one side hybrid with communication strategies on the other side we'll do that i think it's it's going to be more on effective methods of war fighting rather than the large forces of tanks and you know aircraft and so, stuff like that look let's not de- discount it's not no, no, tanks, absolutely yeah, right uh, we are looking at a different kind of a warfare in yeah. the modern day with multiple domains and you know uh, each guy pressing a different lever mm. the lesson for us is how can you use it best best exactly how can you use this information revolution best the requirement is there a requirement of information yes and think like that that is a lesson where we i am deriving from all this 
choose her. We spoke about the communication and I think that's one of the big stone points that is going to come out from this battlefield for all military ad- analysts that how to actually communicate with the outside world and stuff like that. A lot of people attribute the protests in Russia after Zelensky's uh, appeal to the Russian population as well. So, uh, God only knows, you know, how things are connected with each other. It's difficult to analyze at this point of time. So, the intelligence war, it's been very interesting. The US has been kind of pointing out and saying, they're going to attack today, they're going to attack tomorrow. And then they said, okay, it's coming. And it actually came. Uh, They've been calling out Russia time and again. What does that tell you in terms of the intelligence situation? And secondly, if you look at it from the Russian angle, they've, in spite of what all US was saying, they stuck to their plan. So how does this give you the information and what do you analyze between India's security, sir? The next war will be dominated by information and intelligence. Let's not have any doubt about it. Whoever has dominance in this field will get the edge. I mean, you spoke about USA. USA kept giving minute to minute what's happening, how mm. Russian forces mm. are building, how what the intent is, everything. It was all known. Many of us didn't believe it. They were proven right to the end. And their theory was, tell the whole world what Russia is doing. They've done it. Yeah. But we all know what Russia has attempted. How, what is the thing? Now, if Russia fails, their uh, information-wise, they've lost it. Yeah. Okay. Let's. It's a different thing. The Ukrainians disregarded this in the beginning. Mm. Probably they thought they'll, you know, maybe they didn't disregard it, but they didn't play it up. Okay. Look at the Russians. The Russians put out whatever they wanted in terms of information. They kept denying that they're going to do this. They kept denying everything. Their information tactics was different. They, but they kept getting intelligence about Ukraine. They collected all kinds of intelligence. It's very clear. They carried out precision strikes, everything. Now, interestingly, South China Morning Post has said, like, China has started learning about the Russian strategy, their strengths and failures. Mind you. Can you repeat that, sir? Yeah, I just want to ask you. (laughs) The South China Morning Post has repeated, that the Chinese military analysts have started dissecting and analyzing the Russian operation regarding their strengths and failures. China has already started talking of failures of Russian army. <laughs> I don't know uh, where this is going, going to go because we'll come to know in the next uh, couple of days. But the fact is that uh, China achieved strategic surprise. Deception was great. Mm. Information was great. And they executed a deep maneuver. Right? They opened up the battlefield. But have they won? Question mark. Look at it. Flip it back to our eastern Ladakh. Thing. You saw China came with an overdrive of information. They projected everything. Mm. We didn't. We fought on ground. Initially, everyone wrote us off. Our own people wrote us off. Yes. Till we turned the tables at Kalash trains. But then we faltered also. We didn't understand, or rather, we didn't have the wherewithal to understand the Chinese intent. We suffered strategic surprise then. Mm. We gave it back to them at Kailash Range through tactical surprise. That's a different story altogether. The fact is that information, intelligence, and the synthesis of both these will dictate future operations. And if you have this in the right measure, right? It is telling the enemy, look, I know what you're going to do and this is what I'm going to do to you. He'll stop doing that. Do we have that capability? Are we going to develop that capability is a challenge with us. And that's a lesson we have must learn from this. That we need to have this wherewithal and capability to get intelligence and information and make the battlefield transparent. 
put the aggressor on the back foot with a lot of information coming out yeah that's okay. something which we it's a big lesson for me right and with all this happening just think uh, i will talk about this in the military component about informatization and the pla operations we'll talk in the next thing but leave it at that this yeah and yeah i mean i'd like to say here that this is this is not just the only analysis the analysis will go on for some time because a lot is going to change just because of this this conflict is not just another conflict in yemen which doesn't and with all regard to the conflict in yemen and the people and the fighting forces there uh this is not that this is in the heart of the world with superpowers of all sizes and shapes so there's going to be a lot of changes and it's going to take yeah, us time yeah the whole world geopolitics will change because of this war yeah and lightly speaking the outcome will is going to change you are you already showed me that germany is going to uh, yes. up its defense expenditure the moment one up it ups its defense expenditure everything else will it's a race after that alignments so. will change we, i mean we we have now entered a different era altogether it's going to be a multi 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 polar world where power base basically how it, what will of, be yeah. the fallout of this whole story so you know uh, as we are talking about the world order changing what about india sir do we have an opportunity do we have lessons to learn in terms of you know safeguarding our own interests is this the bottom line which is coming out of this entire conflict look the current situation is a geopolitical landmine for india yeah uh, it's this it's full of it's a threat there's lot, lot many people don't see our abstention uh, as a great thing abstention to vote against russia in the un security council but then by not uh, by not voting you put yourself in pole position also so there's a threat and an opportunity opportunity mm. the opportunity is that already uh, mr modi was one of the first, in fact the only first leader to speak to putin to back off mr zelensky spoke to mr modi to help him in the un security council both the leaders have spoken to us there's some amount of faith that's why it has happened yeah both are pre- you are in a position where you know no even mr xi jinping has spoken to putin but will someone speak expect xi jinping to mediate with ukraine no but, uh, mr zelensky has not spoken to xi jinping his appeal is to the west and india mr putin has spoken to india no one else mr baden has said we know india's position but there are unresolved things but that's for a later day that's in its place what is happening in ukraine and india and russia is in one place with, in this thing and the uh, the um, indo pacific is something else india is still our major partner we and we'll resolve those issues yeah that so clarification came pretty fast yes sir yeah it's pretty fast okay that people have already said oh quad is a three legged affair with india out but that's stupid and that's from america only let's make sure so i think that we have this opportunity to become a mediator in this and go up the value chain mm. okay you're not you are walking a tight rope there's no doubt about it it's tight sure yeah our um, uh, students are there our nationals are there okay but we've done a good ex- uh, evacuation we've started the process other country children are using our flags to come out as well our flights and all that and so uh, it's okay uh, we oh, everyone knows that we can't go against russia it's not new our relationship with russia is after all half a century yeah. old yeah yeah even the ukrainians understand everyone understands it within that understanding we have done what we have to do for both even the russians understand that look if india is speaking something they'll be we'll have to listen otherwise this is the last friend will even if he if he leaves us we are done last true friend yeah so there is a you know we still have leverages which we must use after all it's, it's not a thing that uh, the whole thing will get over in the next two days Oh yeah, the effects. Even if the battle gets over, the effects are going to go on and on. Go on. 
absolutely and securing our own interest is something that we should keep on yeah, our yeah. Uh, look i think so far we played our cards well well yes and i'm sure in days coming ahead things will work out well and you know just to add sir the you know the poland has actually the ambassador of poland has just put out a uh, a message today in the afternoon was reported by ani um he says that we we will allow indian students to come inside without visa without whatever it doesn't yeah, matter yeah yeah you just no, actually even i heard the i heard the ukrainian ambassador in india yeah in india uh, talking in on a tv channel and he said look we understand what india has done but india is doing everything what it can my president wants to speak to modi and within one hour he we given a request i am sure things will happen and within one hour i saw in the tv that mr modi and mr zelensky had spoken right so uh, i mean yeah the odd western commentator and the few fools will talk what they want i am not bothered that's part of information warfare again sir. i think you know that's the whole yeah, thing i agree the larger picture is being mulled mulled up by a lot of analysts with the information warfare tactics that have been put out by various different organizations with their own ulterior motives so yeah yeah, yeah. the no, ground reality more. of relations is totally different and that's something that we need to kind of realize Uh, the funny yes. thing is everybody has started talking about cards in india i have not seen one op-ed or one comment about uh, from anywhere even nyt or washington post yeah, yeah, I agree. about cards <laughs> it doesn't say anything i completely agree with you so is just a conversation which is building up in india because of some fool who actually thought oh abhi ye to ye dal dete hain beech mein no no it's no, about no. you know uh, i think you you brought out something really really nicely said that the the, the situation is not as easy for us to understand it is a threat as well as an opportunity and our steps in the future are going to actually decide where we stand in the yes. world order so thank you so much i think uh, this has been a great analysis i have not heard anything of the sort and i have been tracking this damn thing since the first first uh, you know military tactic was played out on the ground in ukraine i was uh, fortunately on a day off so i got <laughs> stuck on to the you know kind of the channels all day long but uh, not seen any analysis that is coming out talking about the future and the lessons that one must learn see um, uh, the main thing is this there are a lot of analysis of what's going on yeah there will be a lot of analysis how the world will shape up after this but for me as a indian and analyst in india i have to see what is there in it for india for me yes sir and what are the lessons when i transpose or conflate th- those with a sino indian equation how did it play out in afghanistan after all we in the past one year two years we've had our own problem with china we've had this major upheaval in afghanistan last year and now this within these three what are the major lessons for india today we focused on uh, the non military aspects leadership people you know which is important uh, economies uh, such like things communications information next time we'll get a clearer military picture and we'll discuss uh, what is it that our indian military has to see learn absolutely absolutely another yeah. final thing what? that i'd like to say is uh, if you don't i'm sorry please go ahead yeah please sir please as a matter of fact uh, you know I, i was just looking down at my phone and there are certain updates uh dr s jayashankar is speaking to the hungarian foreign minister dr s jayashankar is speaking to the moldovan foreign minister so there's heavy amount of diplomacy which is happening and yeah, yeah, the results the, we do see the results on the ground around ukraine as well i mean all the countries have kind of opened their doors towards india and flights are in lot of stuff is happening and i think romania has allowed indian air force aircraft to even uh, go there and there so they they that just tells you the diplomatic heft that india is kind of using and that heft exists that's why you're able to use it um that's a very interesting thing to to look out sir you were saying sir no fine i'm okay with it uh, uh, i think we've got some good lessons out so yes. far and we'll look ahead uh, say maybe in the next 48 hours to come out with some more we can discuss military aspects which i think are very important already have some but i think we should wait for wait for uh, yes and in the uh, meanwhile my heart goes out to the ukrainians who are fighting tremendously 
I'm rooting for the Ukrainians because they are the underdogs. Mm. I'm also rooting for Russians who should come back to senses and resolve it. Both are the same people. I mean, I look at it like that. I root, I root for the Ukrainians because they're the. He's the small guy being crushed by the big, and I yeah. also root for the Russians because he's also the troubled guy. He's not had its uh, his life easy, and he's been pushed to a. Yeah. So how long will he tolerate? Yeah. So it's 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 an unfortunate thing for Ukraine to actually come in the middle of this entire thing. But the larger picture is, I I think, something that we need to understand. So I think we'll we'll get back with the military analysis, as you said, in the next couple of days. Thank you so much for putting this together. I think it's going to be a very interesting conversation to hear for our viewers. And till next time, Jai Hind, sir. Jai Hind, thank you.